Welcome to today's commencement ceremony. I'd like to invite those of you that are able to please rise for the processional as we welcome the Dunwoody College of Technology class of 2019. Please welcome representatives of Dunwoody's Board of Trustees. They are accompanied by today's student speaker and keynote speaker, as well as Dunwoody's Provost, Vice Provost, Associate Provost, Dean of Students, Associate Dean of Students, and members of the President Cabinet. We also welcome our academic deans and managers. Now joining us are members of Dunwoody's faculty. Entering the auditorium, led by alumni Gary Bowe, Glenn Rasmussen, Steve Pinkosh, and the faculty marshals of each department are the fall, spring, and summer semester graduates of the class of 2019. Please welcome the automotive department with graduates from the Automotive Collision Repair and Refinishing, Automotive Service Technology, Honda Professional Automotive Career Training, Mopar Career Automotive Program, and Toyota's Technician Training and Education Network Programs. Please welcome the graduates from the business department, including applied management and leadership, and those who graduate with a concentration in management information systems. Computer department, including graduates from the Computer Networking Systems, Computer Networking Technician, Computer Systems Analysis, Web Development, and Web Programming de and Database Development Programs.
Now entering the auditorium are graduates from the Construction Sciences and Building Technology, which include architectural drafting and design, architecture, construction management, construction project management, electrical construction and maintenance, electrical construction design and management, heating and ventilation, air conditioning installation and residential service, heating and ventilation, air, air conditioning, refrigeration system servicing, interior design, and surveying and civil engineering technology programs. Next up is the Design and Graphics Technology Department, including graduates from Graphic Design and from Pre-Media Technologies. Please now welcome the Health Sciences and Technology graduates, all of whom have earned a degree in Radiologic Technology. Now entering the auditorium are the graduates from Robotics and Manufacturing, which include graduates from the Automated Systems and Robotics, Design for Manufacturing, 3D Printing, Electronics Engineering Technology, Electronics Technology, Engineering Drafting and Design, Industrial Controls, Industrial Controls and Robotics, Machine Tool Technology, Right Skills Now for Manufacturing, welding and metal fabrication and welding technologies programs.
finally, we welcome Dunwoody's new School of Engineering, which this year includes graduates from Industrial Engineering Technology. I present to you the class of 2019 from Dunwoody College of Technology. Please be seated. It is my pleasure on behalf of Dunwoody's Board of Trustees, faculty, staff, alumni, and soon to be graduates to welcome you to Dunwoody College of Technology's commencement ceremony celebrating the class of 2019. Before we begin, I'd like to take a moment to recognize any veterans or active duty military personnel are, who are here today. If you have served or are currently serving our country, please stand so that we may recognize you. I now invite all of us to rise for the national anthem, which will be sung by Dunwoody staff members Peggy Quam and Zach Manns. Please rise and join us for the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Please be seated and thank you to Peggy and Zach. It, I am now pleased to introduce to you our student speaker for today's commencement. Paige Fisher is a graduate of the Industrial Engineering Technology Program. During her time at Dunwoody, Paige served as a student representative for the Program Advisory Committee for the Industrial Engineering Technology Program and was active in Dunwoody's student chapter of the Institute of Industrial and Systems Engineering. She also received the Academic Excellence Award for the School of Engineering. Paige landed an internship at Tolomatic partway through her bachelor's completion program and recently accepted a full-time position there as a manufacturing engineer. Please welcome Paige Fisher. Good evening, President Wagner, Dunwoody staff, faculty, my fellow graduates and guests. We are excited you could be here today to celebrate our hard work. My name is Paige Fisher, and I'm honored to be speaking with you. I have been at Dunwoody for four years and am graduating from the Industrial Engineering Technology Program. Similar to my dad and grandpa, who worked as machinists and then worked their way into manufacturing engineers, I started at Dunwoody in the Machine Tool Technology Program before moving into the Industrial Engineering Technology Program. 
My goal is to become a manufacturing engineer just like they had done. I have always enjoyed working with my hands and finding out th how and why things work like they do. When I first came to tour Dunwoody, I wanted to find out how to get into the industrial engineering program. I previously completed my associates in liberal arts from Normandale while still in high school and thought I could go directly into industrial engineering. Unfortunately, or so I had thought at the time, I had no technical credits and learned it was not possible to go directly into industrial engineering. Over the first semester, I decided that machine tool technology was the degree that I wanted to complete. Throughout those first two years here, there was times I was confused by the content and did not know the best way to complete a project. For a final project, I set my sights high and decided to make a plastic injection mold of Batman. Batman is my favorite superhero because he makes sense to me, whereas Spider-Man is not logical. <laughs> Batman's abilities are enhanced by the machines he uses, and those enhancements are things that could be created and developed by engineers. Throughout the process of completing my mold, I, I wanted to change my project because it was becoming too difficult. Brian, my instructor, did not see that as a viable option. Instead, he pushed me through this and helped me through the process. When I would get stuck or feel like it was too large to complete, he would give me ideas on trying it a different way. When I completed this project and we were able to run it on the molding machine, I was excited. The mold worked and the Batman mold I created was making Batmans. Currently at my job, I have a completed Batman from my final project of machining to remind me what I'm capable of and where I started. After I graduated from the machine tool technology degree, I went directly into the industrial engineering program. The following fall, I showed up to class and there was a whole new batch of students with me. I knew that this degree was what I had always wanted to complete. As the first semester went on, classes were going well and we were starting to rely on each other for help and guidance. Over the first semester, I knew that this program was where I belonged. The classes made sense and I was able to complete the projects with ease. During the first semester, we had a class where we went through the process of designing, manufacturing, and estimating the cost of a lamp. During the manufacturing process, there are things I had never done before, such as welding and electrical. It was a bit of a struggle for me the first time I tried to weld. With guidance from the instructor and help from other students, I was successfully able to weld my lampshade together. I would not say that I'm a professional welder by any means, but my lamp is sitting in my room next to my bed. It's something I can be proud of making and learning new processes along the way. There have been times during my journey at Dunwoody when it was not fun and exciting. It was stressful and overwhelming. Those were the times when I had to remember the end goal. I had to buckle down and put in the extra effort. Once I was able to overcome those issues, it felt like I had made another achievement. It did not take long for me to figure out that the manufacturing field is made up of mostly males. During the machine tool technology degree, I was the only female in a class of 18 students. In a male-dominated field, I felt like I needed to prove myself as capable, just like anyone else in the program. As the program went on, I could tell I was impressing them with my knowledge because I would have other students asking me questions. When I moved into the industrial engineering degree, there was the same challenges of being a female in a male-dominated field. However, I did not let that discourage me. I started working hard to prove to others that this is where I belong. And just because I'm female does not mean I do not know what I'm doing. I know that going into the field, there are going to be people who have predetermined ideas on the ideal manufacturing worker. Whether that is race, gender, body type, size, or whatever it might be. Those are the times to put doubt aside and do what you know. Work through those issues on the shop floor, in the office, or in the studio, and complete the project that no one thought you could get done. Show them what you're made of and that they want you on their team. One important thing I've taken away from my experience at Dunwoody is that things do not always go as planned. Before I even started at Dunwoody, the plan was to go directly into industrial engineering, and that did not go as planned. Once at Dunwoody, in both programs, 
there have been things that come up that the textbooks do, do not talk about. Thankfully for Dunwoody ex instructors with real world experience, I'm able to talk with them and overcome the obstacles before me. When we go out into the field, whether we've been there already or not, we need to remember what we learned here at Dunwoody. Just because it does not go as planned does not mean that it failed. That's the time to use our experience and our coworkers' experience to overcome, adapt, and make it work. On behalf of all the graduates, I'd like to say thank you. Thank you to the faculty that helped us learn in order for us to be successful in the field. Thank you to the staff that make Dunwoody as successful and well-known as it is today. Thank you to our friends and family that have stuck with us through this journey. We could not have done it without you. Many of us know it was not always an easy journey, but here we are at the end of this experience, ready to begin a new journey. Lastly, but most importantly, to the 2019 Dunwoody graduating class, we made it. When we leave here today, it's a time to celebrate what we've accomplished. You should all be very proud of what you've done. Let's go show the industry what Dunwoody graduates are all about. Congratulations, Dunwoody graduating class of 2019. Thank you, Paige. You have represented the other graduates well, and we wish you all the best. Now it's my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker, Retha Clark King, known for her pioneering service in chemistry, higher education, business, philanthropy, and community service. Retha completed a PhD in physical chemistry at the University of Chicago. She became the first African-American female research chemist for the National Bureau of Standards in Washington, D.C., where her research contributed to the NASA space program. Retha moved to Minneapolis, uh, to Minnesota in 1977 when she was appointed the second president of Metropolitan State University. She has received many awards and honors over the years and has served on numerous boards, including as chair of the board of, of the General Mills Foundation. She is currently a member of the board of the Minnesota Council of Churches Foundation. Please, we're pleased to have her here with us today. Please join me in welcoming our keynote speaker, Retha King. Thank you. Well, well, first of all, I want to tell you something that I don't think we've told you yet. You sure are a beautiful audience, and congratulations for that. Uh, and uh, as we used to say in the country in South Georgia, we say to little children, you are a beautiful child. Well, you are a beautiful audience, and you can see we are very passionate about being here with you. Uh, thank you, President Wagner, for your Wonderful introduction, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, members of the Dunwoody Board of Trustees, Emerita Trustees, uh, Dunwoody faculty and administrators, 2019 graduates, parents, friends, relatives of the graduates, and Dunwoody's over 200,000 alums. And I'm happy today to help you add to that number. And we're going to add a lot to the number. I am so honored to be your speaker at this very inspiring occasion. And I thank you for choosing me. And I thank Paige for her inspiring remarks. Uh, she made me want to go back to school again. Uh, and uh, it's, so I, I know from what she says how exciting learning is here at Dunwoody. My title for my message is The Power of Education, The Magic of Love. This is a topic I have earned the right to talk about through experiences and years of struggle. I know from much experience that all of our Minnesota college and university graduations have lots of significance for our entire state. Our graduations each year indicate that our state will be getting new manpower, woman power, and people resources available to help our communities continue to thrive. As new workers in the environment, you will bring fresh ideas, new skills, and creative talents to solve new and old problems in our workplaces. As uh, Paige has reminded us, 
When you find the unexpected, you go back and try it again. And that's the spirit to have. That's the done with his spirit. And that's wonderful for our work environment. From experience, I also know that there are other organizations outside of Minnesota that will be welcoming your skills and talent with open arms. Over my 42 years as a Minnesota resident, I have worked with many national and international nonprofit and corporate organizations. I have observed firsthand the ways Minnesotans have made unique contributions to our national and global communities. I have often heard many compliments about people from Minnesota, about our good problem-solving skills, great minds, good intentions, and good hearts. So today, through your graduation, you're going to add mightily to that pool of talent for the rest of communities. As we celebrate your graduation tonight, we can also celebrate the lives of Mr. William Dunwoody, the founder of Dunwoody Institute then, and his wife, Ms. Kate Dunwoody, who were two wonderful examples of service, community outreach, and sharing for the common good. As you graduate, you will become also our future leaders who will take the places of current and current leaders and guide our companies, organizations, and communities to new levels of performance. As we pass our torches to you, I am feeling very confident that you will be successful because you are graduating destined. As noted in your inspiring slogan, come determine, graduate destined. I love your slogan and I, I will say to the president, whoever designs them needs a raise. <laughs> we want you to know also that we will stand with you and by you, supporting you every step of the way as you go forward. Now that's the promise that we will keep. I want to observe that there are some reasons, some other reasons for my deep and growing affection for Dunwoody and for my confidence in your future alma mater and how it has prepared you for your future work. I want to name just a few of these reasons because I want your affection and appreciation for your alma mater to also deepen uh, through the years. These are some of the reasons. One, because of your leadership, uh, the Dunwoody leadership. President Wagner and your former president, uh, Dr. Ben Wright, whom I knew and worked with, uh, who wrote that really outstanding 100-year history of Dunwoody. I salute you today, and I thank you for your leadership. I have served as a university president uh, before, and from my exciting experience in that role, I have grown to admire leaders very much. Sometimes it's the toughest job in the world. Uh, sometimes it's the best job in the world but all the, all the more, it is a great service for our society. I wanna thank them for their leadership of this fine and unique Dunwoody College of Technology. I salute you today and I'm feeling your uh, affection because of my own affinity and passion for technological studies and equipment. All of your literature suggests that Dunwoody is contributing to the greatness of our industries and our economy in special ways, and that your hallmark is excellence. Your students and faculty in all those clear goggles in your, in your publications show that they are confident about what they are doing. Seeing so many goggles, I said to myself, Dunwoody must have a goggles factory somewhere. <laughs> I love seeing that because it says that you're conscious about safety, quality standards in the workplace, along with the notions like enterprise risk management and risk mitigation. During my life on the boards of directors, like the ExxonMobil Board of Directors, I learned the critical importance of safety, 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 and risk mitigation. So when I look through your literature, 
I said to myself, they got it. They are leading these, in these issues. Thank you for doing that. My fondness for Dunwoody relates also to the connection with my employer, General Mills. Uh, when I reported for my position at General Mills in 1988, right away I was lucky to be able to read a book on the 50 year history of the company called Business Without Boundary. It described the history of the milling industry and the company's prominent business locations about the country and the connections with Mr. Dunwoody, one of the founders. So that personal fondness caused me to hold on to that book and to look at excerpts from it from time to time. And I was able right away to travel to all of these key locations, Buffalo, Great Falls, Montana, Toledo, Ohio, uh, Cedar Rapids, Hour. Now they might not seem exciting to you, but as a new kid on the block in that company, they were very exciting to me. So this, uh, that connection with my company uh, it means a lot to me. And now I see where the company gets its values, gets its values. Um, my personal fondness for our executives at, at, um, from General Mills who serve on your board, that will stay with me for a long time. I was very fond of Emerita trustee Don Ricks. Don and I were contemporaries at the company and he talked all the time about Dunwoody. And so does, I can see the same kind of fondness in Greg Stojanski, who's uh, sitting over here to my left. Uh, we love Dunwoody uh, in the foundation, and as head of the foundation, I dare not interrupt that grant. I knew better because they would get me. Uh, so <laughs> Mr. Uh, Dunwoody's founding vision lives on, and I will lastly mention that, the specific language, because it is inspiring. Uh, he said that he wanted to provide for all time a place where youth without distinction on account of race, color, or religious prejudice may learn the useful trades and crafts and thereby fit themselves for the better performance of life's duties. Uh, just think about that. That is a powerful notion. Just think about how imagine how and imagine how far-sighted and visionary this thinking was in those early years, aiming for a college with those kinds of values and objectives so long ago. Now, considering how inclusive he was in his thinking, I know that Mr. Dunwoody would update the language on his targeted enrollment today to include another very special group of Dunwoody's current students and this is your veterans. I have been impressed by the diversity of your student body and quite pleased to notice that your student body is inclusive and that it has an impressive percentage of veterans. Uh, there are several reasons I have a fondness for veterans and uh, I have worked mightily in Washington to provide continuing education for returning officers so that they could uh, get jobs, participate fully in our American life. So just recently, we designed a seminar for those who want to serve on corporate boards. And astutely, the name is From the Battlefield to the Boardroom. And I have looked at proxy statements from uh, of companies whose stocks I hold. And uh, guess what? If they have a veteran, uh, a general, on the board, that person is chair of the board. Now, you uh, veterans sitting amongst the graduates will say, that's not surprising. We know we are smart. <laughs> but uh, everybody else, those in Washington, learn that as well. So thank you, Dunny, Dunwoody, for making the provision for our veterans. So I come to you today sharing your joy and pride that you are feeling because of your achievements because of your support and the love you have received from your faculty and the outstanding help you are receiving from Dunwoody's faculty, staff, friends, and donors. 42 years ago, two months after arriving in Minnesota, our family met Carnell and Wendell Moore 
good friends of Dunwoody College of Technology, and luckily, my family, uh, for my family, they became our good friends as well. They reached out to us, and we had our first Thanksgiving dinner in their home. And um, that was uh, a mighty encounter for us because we learned things that we never knew about Minnesota, our new home. Um, I chose the power of education to talk about the magic of love for special reason. Education and love have been important tools that helped me overcome societal obstacles and struggles throughout my life. And this is the reason I feel so proud of the Dunwoody College of Technology. Over the years, I learned to appreciate both of these notions, education and love from teachers, mentors, family, friends, and many experts. As you receive your degrees tonight, I would like for you to feel as confident and empowered as possible to face the future. My feeling of pride tonight in your achievement uh, as you obtain your degrees was instilled in me at age four, some seven to seven years ago. At that time, we black children in rural South Georgia were advised to work hard in school, get an education, and then leave home, South Georgia, for better work opportunities and better treatment than we were receiving as black Americans in my home state. So we aimed to leave Georgia and go up north. We were part of that great migration of blacks from the south. So getting an education was a big deal for our community. Mine was a sharecropper family consisting of my mother, father, two sisters, and me on this large farm where we worked hard and rented housing and got along on meager resources. We never owned anything. In other words, we were quite poor. Our two main crops were tobacco and cotton. And my sister and I, older sister, became award-winning cotton pickers. Uh, we would be in the field by 4.30 in the morning to pick the cotton while the dew was still on it. And then it would weigh more. We would get paid more. <laughs> oh, oh, and you call that cheating? Yo, we didn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, we lived in a caring, black, highly segregated community. As an uneducated man, my father did everything to man manage these large farms and to keep things going smoothly for our bosses and train day workers and be the mechanic as things needed to be repaired. He was re illiterate, but he had a reputation for being very smart. And he could pray in church like nobody else his nickname was Preacher Clark. On Sunday, he would get on his knees and pray to the hills. And, um, and he was admired for that. He was smart, uh, he was ingenious, he was inventive. And some of those talents of my illiterate father rubbed off on his daughters. So though I have many degrees, and I enjoy having them. I know that I got my genes from my illiterate father and my illiterate grandmother. So I'm forever grateful for what they passed on to me. Though it was not wealth, it was another kind of wealth that was so important for my future success. Now, in school, our teacher taught all seven grades in this one-room schoolhouse. And when I got to the eighth grade, we took the bus to town. And um, then after school, we came back and worked in the, on the farm until dark. Uh, in summary, we were uneducated, this community, without resources, without health care, and without civil rights. And that was destined to change. Our school was substandard because everything was crammed in that one room schoolhouse and the powers to be down, downtown didn't care whether we had sufficient resources or not. Uh, but we learned from our teachers to study hard, work hard, and use our smarts to aim for a better life. Uh, and uh, surely we were girls 
And uh, we um, were bookworms, but uh, that didn't matter to us. If we had told our aunts, they would have said, you shouldn't be studying so hard and get to get that education. You should be looking for a husband. So Paige, we had another kind of problem. And uh, during those days, and it was much harder for girls trying to study science, we just didn't tell anybody. Uh, we just went ahead and learned. Um, the sharecropper life and lack of total civil rights, or uh, inner civil rights, motivated my sisters and I to get, a, get an education, go to college, leave home, and uh, overcome my state of powerlessness, believing that more education was the tool we needed in order to overcome our disadvantages and to help our family and community. I'm very big on sharing uh, because that's the way our community got along, and I encourage you graduates to be the same as you go forward. You will be more prosperous, for sure, than many of your um, uh, relatives, but you can share with them. As a family, our love for one another helped a great deal. As a matter of fact, it was magic. Uh, so as I cheer you tonight, I cheer for you with such confidence as you receive your degrees, because I know a lot about the power of education. And I will be saying, when you get that degree, more power to you. And I will assure you that as you move from this point on into the future, you will get more education and achieve more power and the ability to control your circumstances and share with others. As a black American, that's what I wanted most, ability to control my circumstances. Well, life got better as we went along. My sisters and I spread out to three different colleges, and um, I went on to Atlanta to uh, Clark College. My sister, to help our family, chose to join the Army. She joined the Army Nurse Corps when she was a junior in college, and knowing that she would have that obligation to serve two years uh, after she graduated from college. She would go into the Army Nurse Corps formally, and, um, but she, she was motivated to do that to get to $250 a month. And uh, she spread that around to, my, to me and Clark College. She helped my mother with some much needed surgery, and she just uh, showed that magic of love. And uh, so that's another reason for my affinity to the military, to veterans. Uh, because that's where she met her husband, and uh, he was stationed at Fort Belvoir in Washington, D.C. And uh, so the military runs deep in my family, and th that provided much opportunities for us. Um, I left home at age 16, went on to Clark College, graduated at 20, uh, went on to the University of Chicago, uh, got a doctorate degree and a master's degree, and I studied between two departments, the Institute for the Study of Metals and the Department of Chemistry. Uh, I can tell you more about metals and alloys than you ever want to know. Uh, I just like to think about them for the sake of thinking about them. I know their properties. And uh, I see some of you smiling. You probably had similar experiences with these uh, metals, alloys, and the halogen elements, by the way, the periodic chart. Um, while I was in graduate school, there was tragedy, hap tragedy happening in communities. The uh, civil rights uh, air problems were bursting out all over in our home states of Alabama and Georgia. We ha my husband and I later I got married. We were worried about our families. And uh, we, they encouraged us to con continue on in school. And uh, I went on to get a job at the National Bureau of Standards, very prestigious uh, organization in Washington, D.C. And my uh, professors at the university were thrilled, thrilled. And I was assigned right away to a NASA project to study the heat of formation of oxygen difluoride. And I urge you, if you don't know about it, don't try to find out. It is. <laughs> It is one of the most toxic, poisonous, <laughs> explosive, 
materials out there, but NASA needed it as a rocket fuel. Fortunately, I succeeded in finding the number they were looking for, and I received dis got distinction from my agency, uh, a recognition and also a, a check in the mail uh, as a reward. So I developed a reputation for problem solving. And like you, I see in everything about Dunwoody that in uh, the uh, fields that were announced as you were coming in, that we have some great problem solving here. And you will be sought after for that skill. And uh, that's wonderful. You will be able to figure things out, figure things out. And I love that about the sciences and the techno technological fields. Um, eventually, we went on, succeeded. My husband uh, went to graduate school, got a PhD degree in chemistry. We started our family. Uh, he was in organic chemistry, and he uh, worked in academia for a while. We moved to Minnesota in 1977, uh, and uh, he started working at 3M as I was appointed to be president of Metropolitan State, uh, a position that was not to be because it was not good for women and minorities to seek positions in higher education, leadership. Uh, people would just not hire us. But I had a trick. I got more education, got a master's in business administration degree uh, while I was in New York, and I went on sabbatical. And uh, when the board asked me the questions at the basement of the Capitol in Washington, in, in St. Paul, I was able, as the young people say, I nailed it. And you know why? Uh, the, the, most of the questions were about a terrible audit from the state auditor that Metropolitan State had received. They wanted to know what I would do to clear up that problem. And it so happened that my favorite subject in business school was accounting. So I was able to answer those questions without difficulty. Did I tell my aunt that I was going back to school to get a master's degree? No, I didn't. Because she said, you have enough education you're going to need more education, uh, continuing education. Don't let anybody discourage you from getting it because the future is telling us that. There will be future trends that you will need to learn about. So as I sit down, I encourage you to own the future and serve. You are now prepared to lead us into the future with confidence. And I want to wish you and your family all the best as you graduate from our beloved Dunwoody College of Technology. I want you to support the college, first of all, and own the future. Uh, continue to use your best tools, and they are the power of education and the magic of love. The power of education and the magic of love. You will get additional degrees and do lots of continuing education because you gotta stay current. But you are so fortunate because your degree from Dunwoody gives you the perfect foundation for continued learning and future prosperity. You will find that a degree from Dunwoody will speak volumes to others about your capabilities. People will assume that you are creative, innovative, you have technical skills, you are curious, and best of all, that you aim for excellence in all that you do. And I know that you will rise to these other people's expectations. Thank you. Thank you, Aretha, for your words of wisdom for our graduates. We'd now like to recognize some of our student, accom student accomplishments for, uh, from the class of 2019. Dunwoody's Alumni Association recognizes the importance of attendance in the world of work and believes that regular and reliable attendance is an essential part of developing good work habits and should always be a cornerstone of Dunwoody's education model. As such, Dunwoody's Alumni Association established the Attendance Award to qualify for these awards, students must attend 98% or more of their class sessions during their entire Dunwoody career. Will all of those students who received an attendance award please stand so we can recognize you.
Congratulations, attendance award winners. Please be seated. We recognize students who achieve outstanding grade point average through Latin honors. Cum laude recognizes students with a grade point average of 3.5 to 3.69, magnum cum laude for grade point averages of 3.7 to 3.89, and summa cum laude for students who achieved a grade point average of 3.9 or higher on a four-point scale. With all those students who are graduating with Latin honors, please stand. Congratulations on your outstanding academic performance. Please be seated. Will all the Phi Theta Kappa members please stand? <laughs> Phi Theta Kappa is the International Honor Society for two-year colleges. Membership in Phi Theta Kappa requires members to maintain a 3.5 grade point average and members are expected to develop leadership skills and engage in community service. Congratulations to your commitment to the tenets of Phi Theta, uh, Phi Theta Kappa. Will the students who receive the Academic Excellence Community Service or Student Leadership Award please stand? Congratulations on your demonstrated excellence in and commitment to academic achievement and the campus community. Please be seated. We also want to recognize any alumni who are here with us today. We know that some of our current students have family members and friends who also attended the college. If you're a graduate of Dunwoody, please stand so we may recognize you. Please be seated. <laughs> Will the faculty of Dunwoody College of Technology please stand and remain standing throughout the conferring of the degrees? We will first award the certificates. Will the certificate candidates please stand and remain standing? President Wagner, these candidates for graduation have been approved by the faculty and have met or are about to meet all of the requirements so they may be awarded a certificate. On behalf of the Board of Trustees of Dunwoody College of Technology and under authority granted by the Minnesota Office of Higher Education and the Higher Learning Commission, and upon completion of the required curriculum under the direction of Dunwoody faculty, I now confer upon you the certificate listed in the commencement program and all the privileges and obligations pertaining thereto. You may be seated. <clears throat> Will the candidates for the Associate of Applied Science degree please stand and remain standing? President Wagner, these candidates for graduation have been approved by the faculty and have met or are about to meet all of the requirements so that they may be awarded their associate's degree. On behalf of the Board of Trustees of Dunwoody College of Technology and under authority granted by the Minnesota Office of Higher Education and the Higher Learning Commission, and upon completion of the required curriculum under the direction of Dunwoody faculty, I now confer upon you the Associate of Applied Science degree listed in the commencement program, and with that degree, all the privileges and obligations pertaining thereto. You may be seated, graduates. Will the bachelor's degree candidates please stand and remain standing? President Wagner, these candidates for graduation have been approved by the faculty and have met or are about to meet all of the requirements so that they may be awarded their Bachelor of Science or Bachelor of Architecture degree. 
On behalf of the Board of Trustees of Dunwoody College of Technology and under authority granted by the Minnesota Office of Higher Education and the Higher Learning Commission, and upon completion of the required curriculum under the direction of Dunwoody faculty, I now confer upon you the Bachelor of Science or Bachelor of Architectural degree listed in the commencement program, and with that degree, all the privileges and obligations pertaining thereto. You may now be seated, graduates and faculty. We will now award the diplomas. Our first graduate to receive her diploma is student speaker Paige Ann Fisher, Bachelor of Science in Industrial Technology. And now the Associate of Applied Science graduates from Automotive, Collision, Repair, and Refinishing. Jeremy Michael Hedin. Dakota John Lafever. M. McKenzie. And now the Associate of Applied Science graduates from Automotive Service and Technology, Owen Roger Anderson. Michael Rhodes Benson. <laughs> Shay Michael Benson. Ryan Craig Blackfellner. <laughs> Ni Moa. Andrew Meacham Piper. Andrew John Rogers. Bryce Patrick Warren. Now the Associate of Applied Science graduates from Honda Professional Automotive Career Training. Gabriel O. Duwudu. <laughs> Dalton Lee Ford. <laughs> Manuel Hernandez. Colin Alonzo Hines. Amy Lee Hines. Michael M. Martinez, Sr. Snehal J. Patel. Now the Associate of Applied Science graduates from Mopar Career Automotive Program, Sean Mullen Cornell. <laughs> Tyler William Leak. <laughs> Kyle 
Patrick Messer. Sebastian Michael Walker. And now the Associate of Applied Science graduates from Toyota's Technician Training and Education Network. Noah James Gordon Edwards. Christina Marie Ellis. Jordan John Keller. <laughs> Maxwell Robert Luft. <laughs> Michael Lord Lloyd Osterbauer. And now the Bachelor of Science graduates from Applied Management and Leadership, Cody J. Bullis. And now the Bachelor of Science graduates from Applied Management with MIS Concentration, Brandon Paul Solberg. Now the Associate of Applied Science graduates from Computer Networking Systems, Thomas John Ambrosich. Jamari Dublin Barnum. Grant Bo Besh. Lucas John Burns. Isaiah Matthew Curtis. Braden Christopher Dagenet. Lao Fo Yun. Maggie Joan Hansen. Ju Her. Adam James Huber. Evan Stephen Knudsen. Ryan Joseph Myers. Joshua Samuel Masimer. Jesse Lee Olson. Christopher Lee Parson. Parker J. Round. Kyle Jason Reynolds. Jake Matthew Shupian. Stephen Eric Stewart. Travis James Thorpe. Sean Paul Wadman. And now the certificate graduates from Computer Networking Technician, Dennis Joseph Lawler. James Brand McCann. Christopher Caleb Rivera. Okay. 
and now the Bachelor of Science graduates from Computer Systems Analysis, Kazimir Artem Bloom. Christopher Hoang Kao. Bryce L. Fisher. Caleb Garshweiler Hayes. Austin Christopher Hutner. Benico Longrath. Scott James Riel. And now the, now the Associate of Applied Science graduates from Web Development, Peter Michael Eratinji. Daniel Lee Clark. Jason Allen Halverson. Brandon David Prairie. Kua James Tao. And now the Associate of Applied Science graduates from Web Programming and Database Development. Jonathan Michael Itkonen. Connor Roland Miller. Larissa K. Pacella. Mara Rebecca Russell. Kyle Jacob Schrader. Samantha Ann Tate. Kenneth Wameng Zhang. Now the Associate of Applied Science graduates from Architecture, Drafting, and Design. Madison McClay Ahrens. Joshua Aaron Baim. Carissa Carey Frenchu. Aaron Kopp. Sydney Joe Elise Curti. Max Bradley Lorbach. David M. Markey. Mark Anthony Miller. Andrew Joseph Nelson. Olivia Karen Nelson. Helena Elise Perez. Brandon Thomas Peach. Elvis Reyes Vo. And now the Bachelor of Architecture graduates from Architecture. Hannah Luis Byros. Josiah James Hanka. Kyle Brendan Huberty.
Ryan Elliott Kelly. James R. Mathis. Aaron James McCauley Arberto. Benjamin Luis, Lewis Sherman. Hajira Tasnim Siddiqui. Marcos Levi Villalobos. And now the Bachelor of Science graduates from Construction Management. Kyle Joseph Bliss. Chad Joseph Brooks. Erica Cherie Kegler. McBon Babka Jakenji. Taylor Marie Paschke. <laughs> Chloe M. Pakala. <laughs> Gregory Luke Radcliffe. Okay. And now the Associate of Applied Science graduates from Construction Project Management. Benjamin James Baker. John Joseph Binnick. <laughs> Nakisha N. Caldwell. <laughs> Drew I. Davis. <laughs> Alexa Kate Dick. Tyler Scott Fish. Kurt D. Gilland. Samantha K. Helt. Corey James Howard. Ibrahim Ismail Ibrahim. Matthew Robert Cryer. Joshua Fernando Hus Rendon. Rendon. Sorry, let me start over. Husway Fernando Rendon. <laughs> Got it. Mark Richard Rice. Anthony Roy Kenneth Rush. Kyle Marcus Sherry. Tyler John Siviola. Jesse Eugene Rodriguez. Garrett Raymond Siegfried. Samuel Lee Walls. Jared Joseph Wafford. Now the certificate graduates from Construction Project Management. Aaron Jade Ballweber. Mariella Hendricks. Stephen James Worth.
And now the Associate of Applied Science graduates from Electrical Construction and Maintenance. Spencer James Becker. David Demenenko. Joseph John Gilbert. Shah D. Hassan. Tanner Cordero Ike. James Robert Lapsley. Cody James Melanac. Thank you. Luis Arturo Martinez. Daniel Arnold Nungesser. Matthew James Olson. Tyler James Popley. Andrew Jayton Prestigard. Benjamin K. Prohaska. Wilson Strong. Miles Daniel Thomason. Keith Allen Unterberger. And now the Associate of Applied Science graduates from Electrical Construction, Design, and Maintenance. David Field Gustafson. Matthew Robert Levitt. Jack Joseph McCumber. Bibi Nursuito. Zachary Ryan Swenson. And now, the Associate of Applied Science graduates from the HVAC Installation and Residential Service, Christian Javier Arias. Ben Charles Buzel. Colby Stephen Crawford. Spencer Eric Lund. <laughs> Ivan William Stoll. And now the Associate of Applied Science graduates from HVAC R System Servicing. Jordan Bradley Adams Burquist. Owen Kenneth Barnes. Mark Thomas Hine. Bryce Liam Hill. Eric Eugene Johnson. Axel William Norman. Matthew Thomas, oh, where's your house key? Eric Robert Autumn.
Taylor Marissa Roy. Shelby Adair Santelli. Yes, Timothy John Welly. And now the Bachelor of Science graduates from Interior Design, Elisa Marie Arnold. Ikari Becker. Katie Grace Humphrey. <laughs> Stephanie Ann Justice. <laughs> Janina Constance Cayley. <laughs> Brandy May Lynn. Ann McGrath. <laughs> Jessica Ainikesha Rugara Baum. <laughs> Brianna Marie Schumacher. And now the Associate of Applied Science graduates from Surveying and Civil Engineering Technology, Blake Charles Denoweth. <laughs> Logan Patrick Hollock. <laughs> Brady John Halverson. <laughs> Caleb Lee Colander. Justin Paul McDaniel. Miles David Rubinzer. And now the Associate of Applied Science graduates from Graphic Design, Sean Columbus. Angelica Faustina Gunderson. Clint Gunderson. <laughs> Emily Marie Hansen. <laughs> Catherine Ray Holmquist. <laughs> Samuel Faye Linden. Jeffrey Davis Loyal. Houston Bershawn Marquis Morrow. Elizabeth Janet Weber. And now the Associate Applied Science graduates from Pre Media Technologies. Austin James Fomer. <laughs> Wayne K. Kenobi. <laughs> Andrew W. Larson. <laughs> Isaac Paul Tambino. Chloe Isabella Thomas. <clears throat> and now the Associate of Applied Science graduates from Radiologic Technology, Megan Susan Betty. Courtney Ann Holst. Michaela Lucero Simpson. <laughs> Michaela Lucero Simpson. <laughs> and
Emily Rain Morales. Rachel Marie Pollard. Marie Catherine Rome. Emily Santiago Otero. Amber Rose Skelton. Braden Wayne Snow. Benjamin John Strickland. Julie Gang. <laughs> Sarah Ann Zender. And now, the Associate of Applied Science graduates from Automated Systems and Robotics, Jeremy Scott Berg. Garrett John Brenner. Stephen Andre Bird. Nicholas James Eisner. Alexander James Ferris. Samuel James Finkelson. Adam Jackley Gull. Tyler James Hahn. Jeremy Rob Kanak. Betty Fang Mecklen. Cody John Meisinger. Derek James Pugh. Nicholas James Solom. Feng Yang Tao. Noah Dan Van Cleve. And now it's my very it's my pleasure to introduce the very first graduating class of the certificate graduates from Design for Manufacturing 3D Printing. Brian Jones Barnstubble Horn. Braxton Jontel Brannon. Anthony Edward Gamash. Bailey Page Pakala. Morgan Celeste Stephan. Thomas Robert Wright. And now the Associate of Applied Science graduates from Electronics Engineering Technology, Nicholas Ryan Bornt. <laughs> Kenneth Nashan Skomberg. And now, the Associate of Applied Science gra graduates from Engineering, Drafting, and Design. Michael Stephen Bui. <laughs> Nicholas Ganacia Carlson. <laughs> Rio James Duran. 
Andrew John Erickson. Alexander James Hartzell. Benjamin William Kafka. Joseph Dennis Ari. Mitchell James Knutson. Nicholas Andrew Mitchell. Jordan Michael Parsons. Malverick J. Peterson. Marshall Charles Schweipster. Jack Robert Smoody. Daniel John Steinbach. Charles Edward Stewart. Jason Kina Hyong Tao. William Maurice Wharton. Hollywood Leo Ya. And now, the Associate of Applied Science graduates from Industrial Controls and Robotics, Philip Endawalhi and Jornan. Jennifer Marie Felberg. Brandon Tyler Hallinan. <laughs> Safu Aman Hadman. <laughs> Alex David Scott Brownson. <laughs> Sergey Makayich. Elsie Payan Burgoy. <laughs> Abigail Nicole Rivers. <laughs> Justin James Ziglin. <laughs> and now the Associate of Applied Science graduates from Machine Tool Technology. Samuel Joseph Adams. Brandon Luis Fesser. Daniel Benjamin Gildemeister. Samuel L.B. Gilsrud. Alec Henry Ford Hilgers. <laughs> Dylan Ryan Jacobson. <laughs> Thomas Gregory Lorenz. <laughs> Mason Matthias Meyer. Madison Zechariah Shaw. Ong Sen. Joseph Paul Strand. And now the certificate graduates from White Skills Now for Manufacturing. Jason Lee Benfield. Yeah. 
Alexander Kyle Flood. Lilith Grace Getting. Jonathan Tang Lee. Justin John Lehman. Leonardo Gare Tao. Henry Vang. Brett Michael Williams. Christopher Lloyd Yanish. And now the Associate of Applied Science graduates from Welding and Metal Fabrication. Cora J. Brinney. Charles Diavillo. Reiner, Co Ryan Connor Doyle. L. Fernau Fall. Matt Benjamin Baker Sofer. Samuel Albert Scalzo. Andrew Kenneth Slack. Colin Michael Stamak. And now the certificate graduates from Welding Technology. Elise Brownridge Alex. Nathan Paul Armas. Alejandro Plehal Bernberg. Cody Temple Bullock. Dalton John Dahlquist. Cheyenne Elaine Hayes. Tyler Evan Howe. Nicholas Jamin Lyons. Jack Robert Masterson. Renee Lee Nichols. Cameron Austin Price. Cole, Jays Cole Jason Timeson. Emily Louise Way. Tristan Seth Wiley. Komong Lang Yang. Patrick Raymond Yates. And now the Bachelor of Science graduates from Industrial Engineering Technology. Adam Marhi Elrai. Tig Doty. Sase Gabra Mescal Gideon. David Carl Harley. Brett 
Ryan Kunkel. Stephanie T. Nguyen. Chua Vang. And I invite all the graduates from the class of 2019 to please rise, and as you do so, move the tassel on your cap to the left to signify your status as a graduate. Ladies and gentlemen, the class of 2019. All right, graduates, now it's your turn. Look around this auditorium, because somewhere out there, there's a, a parent, a friend, a spouse, a partner, faculty member, staff member, somebody that's helped you get to this very important part or in part of your journey. Why don't you turn around and give them a round of applause. Point to them and acknowledge them for all they've <laughs> You may uh, all be seated, please. Thank you. I'm going to, uh, before I make my concluding remarks, I want to remind you that we'll be having a recessional at the end of the ceremony. So parents and spouses, friends and guests, please remain seated during the recessional and you can meet your graduate right outside the auditorium. Congratulations, grads. Today's commencement ceremony marks a great accomplishment and something in which you should take great pride. You've taken a giant step to improve your quality of life through the immediate jobs and great careers that Dunwoody Education makes possible. Bask in the significance of what today represents your immediate family and your Dunwoody family. The alumni, the trustees, the faculty, and the staff all share your pride and excitement. As this, ceremony, as this commencement ceremony draws to a close and you celebrate the transition from student to alum, I want to remind you of a challenge I gave you at orientation. If you remember, I talked about the alumni that came before you and the reputation they built for, one, for Dunwoody. That reputation stands out in the conversations we have with employers. We hear from employers that they hire Dunwoody graduates first. We have employers tell us their best employees are Dunwoody graduates. Employers tell us how Dunwoody graduates are ready to hit the ground running day one. When you tell people that you attended Dunwoody, you'll hear how wonderful the school is. When I talk to people about Dunwoody, I hear the same thing. And all of this is because of the Dunwoody reputation, and it's a reputation that was earned and built by Dunwoody alumni. It was built by men and women who's, who experienced the same thing you are experiencing today, graduating from Dunwoody. It was built by men and women who graduated from Dunwoody and went out into the workforce and immediately contributed to their companies and helped those companies thrive by being the best technicians, the most creative problem solvers, and the go-to person when things weren't working. It was built by alumni who worked their way into leadership positions. It was built by alumni who started their own companies and built industries. It was built by the commitment to excellence, hard work, and discipline that Dunwoody alumni exhibit in every job they complete. The Dunwoody legacy is evident around our city from the buildings Dunwoody alumni designed and built to the companies they started, to the products they've manufactured, to the designs they've created and the projects they've managed. It's humbling and overwhelming to look at the impact Dunwoody alumni have had on and continue to have on our communities, our neighborhoods, our state, and our nation. And now, you carry a responsibility to hold fast to the values that Dunwoody education represents 
and to take with you the challenge of perpetuating Dunwoody's great reputation through your actions and your accomplishments. After the excitement of today fades away, I want you to remind you that your greatest accomplishment lies ahead of you. When I spoke to you at orientation, it was a challenge. Today it's a charge, a charge that each of you must pick up and carry with urgency as our city, state, and region's workforce desperately needs the skills and the passion you now possess. A charge the future students of Dunwoody need you to answer because the legacy of Dunwoody is now in your hands. I know you'll live up to this charge because you've been equipped with a Dunwoody education, the same education that the alumni who have gone before you and what they have used as a foundation to build the Dunwoody legacy. You now represent the best Dunwoody has to offer, and your actions and accomplishments will build Dunwoody's reputation for the next generation of Dunwoody students. And we all look forward with great anticipation to hearing about your successes. Good luck, graduates. Thank you for attending Dunwoody, and welcome to the proud group known as Dunwoody Alumni. To our guests, thank you for coming today. Please remember to stay seated uh, until the recessional is over and join us outside to congratulate all of our alum as they join the ranks of graduates from Dunwoody College of Technology. Congratulations, everybody.